coming off of our best season yet in season three, we were close to making the playoffs. And after a slow start, we had a streak of about five games, putting us in a spot to possibly win our division in place to make the playoffs. But in the last quarter of the season, we would essentially fall off, missing the playoffs with our best record of seven and 10. And today is where we begin some more off-season work and start and get through the regular season of season four. Now, we have an interesting thing that took place here at the end of the season with the Chargers winning the Super Bowl 38-28. It is their third Super Bowl championship in a row. Now, if you guys were here for the last episode where we again went through the season three full regular season and then the previous off-season, we had a crash in that off-season. So, Essentially what happened last year after we had to re-go through it, it was 38-28 Chargers winning over the Eagles. The same as this last year. Now in the first part going through, it was actually the Seattle Seahawks who won that Super Bowl, even though in the year right before they had lost to the Chargers, 35-28. So in the new universe, I guess you could say the Chargers have won three Super Bowls in a row, Patrick Mahomes, the Super Bowl MVP in each. You can also see the yearly awards over on the right-hand side. We did not win any yearly awards. Our closest guy to maybe winning an award was the edge rusher, the rookie edge rusher in Adrian Sharp. He was like, I wanna say fourth in the running. We did have a pro bowler in Julian Blackman at Strong Safety, so that part, awesome. But that's essentially it for us from season three. And moving into season four, we will be without Kyle Van Noy. He was the guy we brought in last year and he was a backup, a little bit of a rotational player for us, but we will be without him. Players we are not hoping to be without. Devin Lloyd does have interest. Julian Blackman, as mentioned, just off a Pro Bowl season. Romeo Dobbs, do you wanna bring him back? Zach Wilson, I'm fine with letting him go. He's a backup quarterback for us now. Taron Johnson, wanna to try to bring him back. Nikhil Harry, he could stay, he can go, probably try to go back to him in open free agency. Blake Freeland, we do need to bring back. He's a starting offensive lineman. Diabati has not produced all too well for us, but he's one of the highest overall available at an outside linebacker spot. Cameron Johnson was a undrafted rookie. If he comes back, fantastic. Same for Burns. Blaylock is gonna be depth for us. Cole Turner, depth for us. Royce Newman, don't really remember him. I feel like that might've been a signing that the CPU made. Sewell, he could be a backup for us. Wharton has been a backup. Anderson, same thing. Tonga, now he's been a starter for us and someone we probably should try to bring back. Jonah Williams has been a little bit of a rotational guy, but most of these are probably going to be in open free agency, but we need to try to lock down some of the top guys at the top. So Devin Lloyd is looking for a four year deal worth about 10 mil per season. And I think we could definitely get that done. So let's just boost up the numbers a little bit there. And he is back. As for Julian Blackman, three years, just about five and a half mil. I think that is perfectly fine with me. So again, boost up the numbers a little bit, just a three year deal and he will return. Romeo Dobbs, again, one of these starters for us at receiver. He's looking for three years closer to nine mil, which I think we could definitely do. We could also just boost it up a little bit more, make sure we bring him in. And again, he returns. Or perhaps I didn't actually read it. Thought he said that he liked it, but apparently he didn't sign. If we want to franchise tag him, it's about 20 mil. So that's probably something we'll have to go back to in open free agency. As for Taron Johnson, 30 years old, would like to keep him around. We could boost up the numbers here, make it one year for eight mil higher than his expected value, and he will return. As for Blake Freeland, he just wants a one year, around five and a quarter mil. We could even boost that up, make it a two year deal so we don't have to worry about it. Boost up the numbers a little bit more, and we got our guy back. As for Diabati, he wants two years, 3.33. Again, doesn't have a lot of interest, so we could raise up these numbers a little bit and he's gonna return. So a lot of these guys that don't have a whole lot of interest outside of Romeo Dobbs, they're signing. And last one we will negotiate here. Let's just add a little bit of some bonus here for Tonga. Again, he's been a starter for us and he will return. As for everyone else, we have told them we're not interested in making any signings 
right here, though we'll still probably try to bring them back in open free agency, definitely needing to go after Romeo Dobbs. And for the most part, open free agency would actually go pretty well for us. We did end up bringing in Rashad White, a guy I think I tried to bring in in the first off season, though he went with a different offer or it was in the draft, the fantasy draft that he went before I could take him. But either way, we brought in Rashad White, brought back Romeo Dobbs, same with Nikhil Harry, Cameron Jackson, George Burns, Cole Turner, and Sewell, and Wharton, and Blaylock. So pretty much all of these guys outside of Rashad White were returners. Now, there was one guy I've tried to get several times through trades. He was finally available in open free agency, but he chose to go elsewhere. Joel Batonio, and I gave him so much money in his contract offer, but he decided to take less money and go play with the Rams. So we are still missing out on the top option we could possibly have for the offensive line. And maybe we'll see if the Rams are up for a trade a little bit later on before the season begins. But it appears that it was a good thing that we did end up re-signing that offensive lineman because we definitely still need him. Now, shifting focus to the draft. What are our options? Well, the one of the top guys, at least, in CJ Bowman, a running back, has gone down a little bit. Projected round two to three is actually a talent grade of a three to four. Now, he does, despite being labeled as a power back, have some decent speed, about a four or five, with some decent agility and acceleration, but nothing fantastic. But he does have some pretty good ball carrier vision, break tackle, stamina, stiff arm. Where is his current? Carrying is a B. So all in all, I think he could be a fine running back, but it's not a position that we really need to go after, especially with us having Zach Moss and then also signing Rashad White. As for the rest of the offense, there is a receiver in Dante Norwood. We're pretty deep at that spot. He's a day three, has some C's, releases a D, so it's not all too intriguing. And unfortunately, none of the offensive linemen look all too good either. I'd say maybe the best one here is Ben Kendricks, because they're all potential undrafted. Going to the defensive line, there is Heath Dennard, a day three, who has gone up supposedly one spot throughout the season, but he's still a very raw talent. He's 6'1", 265, 24 years old, out of Arizona. He's got some pretty decent speed, okay strength, but nothing spectacular. F block shed, D power moves, but does have B finesse, awareness, play rec, and pursuit. Injury should also be pretty good, A to a B. Now we did have a guy start for us last year who was a day three talent, very similar, and he actually performed pretty well. So not saying Dennard is out, but just talking about the true talent here, I would still suspect he's a day three. A little bit further down the line, there is an outside linebacker who's a pass cover guy. I don't trust those, but there is a middle linebacker in Alonzo Johnson, a field general out of Arizona State who did move up. A projected round two to three, actually round one to two. He's six foot, 229, 22 years old. All in all, he looks like he could be a pretty solid guy. He's got some pretty good speed to keep up with the running backs, has strength, all around a pretty good athlete. He has A, awareness and play rec. With B zone coverage, C man, not quite sure exactly how those would end up panning out, but all in all, outside of the injury rating being a D, he could be a solid player and probably is the highest player for us to really go after. There was an outside linebacker in Cedric Wynn, who is a day three, but actually regressed down to a potential undrafted true talent. He has some speed, not a whole lot of strength. He does have B finesse moves, B block shed, so it's still someone we might go after, but don't expect him to really do all too well. And that's kind of the synopsis with a lot of these guys who are potential draftable guys. The last one is Greg Huggins, a safety with D coverages. So not my favorite. So not a whole lot, I feel like, of starting guys that could come in. Alonzo Johnson, when drafted, hopefully, knock on wood, would provide us some flexibility at that inside linebacker spot. Maybe we can make some trades. Heath Dennard could provide some good depth that we don't quite have. And... Honestly, you could even say the same about C.J. Bowman if he's available when there's a spot for us to select him. So let's see where we are selecting. And we have the 11th overall pick, no second rounder, a third, no fourth, a fifth, and a sixth. So it's a good thing there's really not a whole lot of talent in this class because we don't have a whole lot of picks. What it seems like we will probably have to do here is go with the linebacker with the 11th pick, maybe the running back with the third. With the fifth, you could go with 
the uh, defensive lineman. And then with the six, we could take a shot on whoever is available. So that is the plan for the draft. And I did check the mock drafts and again, that linebacker was not expected to go before our selection. So let's just jump through here just to make sure that he does not go as a quarterback goes first, a free safety goes second. At third, it's a tackle going to the Packers. Texans select another offensive tackle. Panthers, outside linebacker out of California. Steelers, another tackle, this one out of Miami. The Giants go with another tackle, this one out of Michigan. A whole lot of tackles going off the board early on here. As a receiver goes to the Colts, the Vikings select another receiver. Patriots, one spot before us, go with the cornerback out of Oregon State. So no drama here. We really know what our options are. So it's very clearly going to be the inside linebacker. Again, providing us some flexibility at that position with some possible trades to bring in guys for other spots. So Alonzo Johnson is a hidden dev with 89 speed, 77 strength, 87 acceleration, 80 agility, and 84 jumping. At 22 years old, hopefully he could provide just again a little bit more for this defense, help try to get us over that hump. Now, as we jump to that third round selection, the running back has already gone. He was around two to three. He did regress to what, a three to four. So I was good taking him at this spot, but he clearly went earlier. So that leaves us with really not much on the offensive side. There is Dante Norwood. I just don't think it's at a spot that we need. He's got a lot of speed, which is great, but he doesn't have any release. He could maybe be a six round pick, but Honestly here, not quite liking most of what our options are. Kind of what we could do, what I feel like might be the best option, it would be a reach to go after Heath Dennard. I would take him in the fourth round. So let's see what trade back opportunities we have. And after looking at all of the options, I think actually taking a second round pick next year would maybe help us out more because that might be more trade candy perhaps to bring in someone else. Heath Dennard maybe could still be available later on. So let's pick up a two next year and drop out of the third. And that plan would end up working out pretty well for us as we still have two selections. Heath Dennard is still here. He again went up one spot. He's a day three talent, probably the best of what we have. Really need that finesse moves and hopefully he has the good awareness and play rec to just pick up the lack of skills he has in the block shed and the power moves. It's a normal dev with a 78 speed, 81 strength, 81 acceleration, 81 jumping. And that at least supplies some depth for a position group that doesn't have a whole lot of it. And with the last selection, I do think we go after the outside linebacker here in Cedric Wynn. I know the talent has potential undrafted and he very well could be a low overall, but I see B finesse moves. I see B block shed. He's at least a dual talent player who just is very raw everywhere else, but he could tackle, he could shed blocks and he has some moves. So why not Cedric win a normal dev with 80 speed, 68 strength. So not very strong with 85 acceleration. Again, adept player for an outside linebacker group. And overall, not too bad of overalls. Alonzo Johnson does end up being a 74 overall. Again, that hidden dev. The zone and man are all right. Do we put him in the starting lineup? We'll have to check him in comparison with mostly Barton, but he has a lot of speed, solid tackle ability. Awareness is at a 78, play rec is at a 75. So he could at least be a rotational guy at worst. As for Heath Dennard, a 68 overall, which does align him in a possible starting rotational role with 67 with 76 finesse moves. Now the block shedding and everything else very low. So he would strictly be an edge rusher, not supplying any sort of run stopping ability, but that kind of fits with the rest of the skill set, especially with the low strength. As for the outside backer in win, with the coaching boost is up to a 65, a true 63. And he has 75 finesse moves and 74 block sheds. So honestly, I'm not all too upset with that selection. He has speed really good acceleration. It's just the awareness and play rec that really drag him down. He's not a secure tackler. It's a 71, but again, it's a weak group for us outside of the starting guys. So he may see some time out there. And now that we've reached week one of season four, there's a couple things I want to do before we jump into this first game. 
And the first is taking a quick look at this next draft class because it is very underwhelming. We have a total of 14 players, and of those 14 players, the highest graded player is Aries Good, a round three to four projected corner. That's one of our deepest positions. Everywhere else, you're gonna have potential undrafted or day three. So there's really not much for us in this next draft class. So what I would prefer to do would be use the draft picks that we have and make some trades, or at least a trade. And I've already taken a look at it and I think it's gonna be good for us. So one of our worst position groups in terms of overall starting is the offensive line and defensive line. Now we have the best possible defensive alignment that we can, but offensive line, we have an 80, a 75, a 75, a 73, and a 75. So while they're not the worst guys to have, there are better options. And obviously we've looked at guys time and time again, like Joel Petonio, who just does not want to play for us. The other option was Austin Corbett. And again, we just haven't really had the opportunity to trade for him because the Jaguars just aren't up for talking about it. However, there is another option due to him just progressing throughout our time this series in Braxton Jones out of Southern Utah. Currently on the Jets, he's a pretty well-balanced offensive lineman and he could kind of shift around to fill out wherever we need. Now again, I've already taken a look and they are up for talking and I don't think the trades are too bad. We had traded in the draft that we just went through for that second round pick. We could use that plus a current fifth round pick and then two years from now, third round pick that we won't be able to use anyway to bring in a starting offensive lineman. So that's what we're going to do. Braxton Jones is in, but it's going to give us a very heavy side of the line. And the fact that Bowles is going to be 80 overall, then Jones 82, then 75 across the rest of the board. But this is going to be the best possible line that we've had so far. Now, of course, that does leave us one guy over the 53. And Ilm Manning is just the odd guy out for this offensive line. So we will be releasing him. But with all of that done, we are finally ready for season four to begin with an 84 offense and 81 defense, 82 overall, the highest starting point that we've had at all throughout any of these seasons. And hopefully this will be our season. It's a tough division for us and we need to make sure we're stacking up wins, especially when we're not playing in division, given how good our division is, just to help us try to keep up and potentially win the division. It's the easiest way to get to the playoffs, so that's obviously goal one, but the main goal is at least sneak into that seventh seed wildcard spot, which will be our first time making the playoffs. And the best way to do that is starting off with a win in week one, so fingers crossed as we jump in. out first as season four is officially underway with a handoff right down the middle is going to be Rashad White breaking through cutting towards the top if he can break away with that speed he's at the 40 30 20 and drag down at the 15 a 60 yard rush the first of his time here with the Southwest State's only challenge goes Rashad White of course, had a shout out all the blocking as well that sprung him, but that is a big play. We need to see a whole lot more of it. As we're down at the 15 here, Love trying to step up, squeezes through some blocks, sprinting down, sliding down, smacked, sandwiched, almost down to the one as an injury in here for Mike Walker. And already seeing some big plays with this offense behind a slightly improved offensive line as we go goal line, following behind and diving on in a a little bit of a rough tackle there at the end, but Rashad White caps off what he started. Already the offense looks better than any time we've previously watched. And now time to see if the defense can keep up with that. It'll be a spread look here to Chiefs start off with some play action. Ritter stepping up, throws out of bounds, avoiding the sack. 
Spiller already getting in the quarterback's face. He had a really good season last year, as well as a couple other of these young defensive linemen. We've just added to it. Pass rush again getting in there. Another hit forces the throw away. I want to say that time it was Weeks coming off the bottom of the line. As it'll stay shotgun spread here. Well, shotgun tight, really. As pass rush again. Rolling, evading the rush, but throws it away as the hit comes in. Bakhtiari shaking up on the play. And time to head off the field with the rest of the offense. Some real promising play as, unfortunately, we lose three play one the next drive. We just need to consistently see some good play. That's been the problem as 22 yards to Ayuk on third and eight. Definitely love to see it. Some chunk plays as Nakua with another one. Down to the 11. Team definitely feels completely different being 100 percent us completely different and all we did was just add a couple other pieces as love throws with a beautiful throw to nakua following that 27 yarder he then tacks on the touchdown and if you listen closely you could hear the loudest stadium in the nfl completely quiet as we get a stop on third and five, do they go for it? No, they do punt away. Shutting out the Chiefs so far, and the crowd base is just, as I mentioned, dead quiet here. We have a third and two with a throwaway. At the 36, we could go ahead and punt from here. Let's be safe about it and not give up any key yardage. Christian McCaffrey picks up two yards, second and eight. He picks up seven, third and one, thrown away. Do they go for it? On fourth and one, they do punt it back. So, so far, both sides doing pretty well. We finally had our first drive not end in a touchdown on the previous. Though starting off with some simple plays here as we head inside the second quarter. A throwaway leaves third and five, and we pick up seven Rashad White. He's kind of taken over the majority of the running back role as he gets 11 there. Does leave us with a third and one in which... We pick up 12 yards to Nakua. We still have Moss as a primary power back as we need another first down to get inside the red zone. Close enough for me. Trying to make this a three score game. Taking the crowd a little bit of who's left chanting at all out of it. As we go to the stretch up top, it's white and into the end zone. Beautiful time to jump in as the blocking was just as beautiful. Second touchdown on the day for white and we're not even to halftime. So far, all's good, but we've seen times where opening week we do really well and then we don't back it up. Though, through a quarter and a half, defense still giving up about nothing. We've had a few losses on offense here and there as we pick up seven, leaving us with third and six. Just like that, we seemingly keep converting. We've gone a lot to Rashad White. He seems to be doing pretty well in this offense. Behind, again, a slightly improved offensive line. Potentially, that was just what we needed this whole time as we do hit the two minute warning here or at least they're about 203 on the clock we're down at the 15. we got two spread either side looking for four touchdown lead before half it's white down the middle with a gain of five with the ball pop free i believe we recover however there's also a booth review so let's take i guess a further look here to see what really happened was he down already that's what it looks like. And indeed, the refs would agree. So we gain back a yard, leaving second and five. And if we're going to have him fumbling, maybe we do need to get a little bit more of Moss in the second half. But for now, we almost had that fourth touchdown. Barely missing, missing. Kincaid <laughs> there as I missed missing. Fun how that uh, ends up being a coincidence. Third and five. Love, check down, but not quite there. But since we're already up three touchdowns, I kind of want to be aggressive and go for it here. A minute 15 left before halftime. And we get swallowed up. Should have thrown it a lot quicker. We had Nikhil Harry across the middle. We got aggressive and we paid for it. Now, hopefully the defense does well and doesn't make us completely pay for it as they start with a gain of 10, then 22, both of the times going to Everett. And they get a gain of five rush that time. They have one timeout remaining back to Everett. First in 10, and we majorly pay for it as Jacoby Myers. 39-yard touchdown right before half. Madden definitely loves those end-of-half shenanigans. 
for sure as we gain 13 and that does send us into halftime. So outside of me trying to make us go for it, inevitably giving up the touchdown after the turnover on downs. Team played really well as now we give up another 27 yards to Jacoby Myers. Is this going to be a game of halves as the Chiefs seemingly have turned things on? Gain of nine, leaving third and one, and they convert. Haven't had to watch the defense for a while here, but they're at the red zone or just before the red zone. Kind of hard to tell as they loft this one up. It's tipped away by Jalen Johnson. Not sure why Blackman was shown there. He was not in coverage. But it's second and 10 with a bunch down to the bottom. One up top for Ritter, who's sitting in the pocket. Pass rush, not quite getting there as quick. They dump it off for Cup, who picks up seven. Ritter just 11 of 20, though, has seemingly turned things on. Again, since we went for it and did not convert. Third and three, handoff down the middle, and pushing forward is Christian McCaffrey. Had a couple guys there, just did not get the tackle in time as they stick with a lot of bunch. This time up top as they go all the way up top. Going to be caught, but a big hit from Johnson. It'll be a short game. Trying to hold on to a two-score lead here. They come out with a goal line set on second and goal back at the eight. Will be a play-action roll, though not rolling much. Dumping off and will be a game of about four to the four. And from there, back to the bunch with one down to the bottom. Ritter from shotgun finding Traylon Burks. We had a guy sitting there in coverage who just wasn't actually covering anyone. And it's back to a one score game. So lesson learned on going for it as we should have taken the field goal. We might have continued to just be running away with things as now Davis Gaither with the sack. Second and 19, we pick up seven. Third and 12, knocked away Davis Gaither. We talked a lot of smack early on here, but the Chiefs now have the opportunity to level this game up. Defense standing tall and continues to do so. Does force the stop offense. Let's get things back going here after I kind of ruined it. Second and six, we lose three. Third and nine, we get 21. Love to see it going to IU. 14 more yards Rashad White. Then an interception going to Ryan Neal. I apparently just keep jinxing us over and over again as we hit the fourth quarter. They're looking to level this game. 21-14. We have not scored since I tried to go for it inside. What was it? Inside the 10, inside the 5? Either way, costly as Ritter going up top does find Everett. Gain of 6. I don't know if the pass rush has slowed down much since the beginning. We didn't obviously get any sacks early on, but we were in the face of Ritter. Haven't quite seen too much of that, though. Spiller with a great stop on McCaffrey. Loss of about a yard, maybe two. We'll leave him with third and six and another bunch set down to the bottom. It's Cooper Cup lone up top for Ritter. In shotgun, rolling, evades the pass rush, stepping up first down, sliding down around the 12 with a fresh set of downs. Got to make sure we don't leave those gaps. We were up. Three scores and so far have given up 14 unanswered points. With a check down, it's picked, jumped by someone. I believe Jalen Johnson. No, that's 39. It's Burgess, the do it all DB. And by do it all, I really mean do it all. He plays safety, slot corner. I'm sure he's even in the depth chart as a backup sub backer if need be. As we start with a throw here, we do get it out to the bottom. It's Kincaid who does just get the first down. He's coming off of a big injury that ended his season last year. I want to say it was a torn rotator cuff. Good to have him back out there. He's a true talent for us. As Rashad White also has been pretty good. 14 carries, 98 yards, two touchdowns. Though majority of that coming off the first couple drives. We need some better rushing here late on to just go ahead and start milking some clock. As we're under five and a half minutes, that's a nice throw going to Ayuk with another first down to the 37. Love is having himself a pretty good game here as that play does not show it. Looks like he got hit from behind or something and the ball just went to the back of the offensive line. Not great, but funny. Second and 10. He's had a touchdown, one interception today. Need to have some clean play to wrap this one up as again going down to Kincaid. Picks up a gain of five and lands in bounds. Make sure that clock keeps on rolling. We got ourselves a third and five with a bunch up top. 
One all the way down to the bottom is Ayuk as we go with a play action. Going down to the bottom, it's a first down and out of bounds goes Nakua at the 42 in plus territory. His fifth catch of the day, 78 yards, and I believe he has that one touchdown thrown by Love. I'm perfectly fine with adding on to that, though still trying to milk some clock as we make a check. Hand off down the middle, it's White who will gain a few yards before meeting the DT. And that DT is Vita Vea. So we've actually done a pretty good job down the middle. Weird to see Vita Vea wearing a number that is not his typical number. Though, of course, as I compliment the offensive line, they fall start. Leaving us with a second and 12. Going to be Jordan Love stepping up and delivering a ball that gets knocked away by Dean. Leaves third and 12. Jordan Love across the middle with a beautiful throw to Kincaid who found the space down inside the 25. A nice methodical drive considering that we've taken some like medium to deep shots within it. As we're around the three minute mark, it's White right down the middle with a juke. He's looking for his third, but he's dragged down at the six. Not gonna lie, would love another touchdown from White to cap off a hat trick in his debut here. It's first and goal. As we're letting the clock run down here, it will be a throw from Love across the middle and out of the back. We had two options there, Nakua and Ayuk. Not sure who it was actually intended for. As we play action here, then quickly trying to get through the line, but not going to sneak through. Will be a sack for Williams. But it does take us inside the two-minute warning. We've done great at milking the clock here. We could take a two-score lead at the minimum. Or... Either way, it's going to be two scores. Love scrambles, takes a hit. No, it pops free. But we recover. Okay, so again, I nearly jinxed us. Luckily, kicking unit is out there as Gay from the 10 boots it through. Two score lead. I should just stop talking. But that wouldn't make for very good commentary. So let's not stop talking. And let's just hope that I don't continue to jinx the team as we're up 24-14. Will be a throw up top. Going to Cup, who steps up with a gain of eight. I would love to see some of that pass rush step up here. As it's second and two, quick throw up top. McCaffrey breaks one tackle, gets close to the 50, steps out around the 47. Again, haven't seen much of that pass rush since the first couple drives. This is first and 10. Across the middle, going back to McCaffrey with a shirt tackle coming in from Denner. That is one of the traits he's best known for, as it's a trip set up top, one just off the line to the bottom. Pass rush held up pretty well as they go deep downfield. It's Cup to the 25. And they're doing all this without using really any of their timeouts. They have two left, under a minute left in the game. Pass rush, you could call for holding there, though no flag comes in. It's going to be a dual tackle there from Barton and Dennard. Barton still getting the start here despite the first round linebacker we drafted. Obviously, took a look at the ratings and they were just still a little bit better with Barton, though if any play drops off or injuries happen, then we could definitely see that rookie. Big tackle there from Lloyd. Make sure that clock is rolling as they're down to about 30 seconds, down 10 points, only a timeout left. It's going to be a roll towards the top. Ritter pass rush coming in and thrown away. That looks a lot more similar to the first drive. And that's another hurry slash hit for weeks. Again, this young defensive line started last year. They're keeping up with what we really saw from them. That's another quick throw across the middle. Last time out called for third and five. At the seven, they got 20 seconds to score 10 points. It's a throw all the way up top and on the dot for Cooper Cup. Now they'll need the onside. So we definitely let up a good bit in this game. Offense got too cocky. Defense started to give up plays. But we recover the onside. Nakua seals the game. Now there's a lot to like from that game. Offense started off hot. We were moving. Seems like there was a good connection from the quarterback to the receivers. Offensive line played pretty well. Though, we obviously slowed down a whole lot after taking that big lead. We can't do that. But that's exactly what would happen the next two weeks as we would lose 24-21 to the Giants and 22-15 to the Cowboys. In these games, it looks like it was potentially a fourth quarter that we gave up. 
to allow the Giants to get to a win because they only had 255 offensive yards. Meanwhile, we had near 400 in this game, Jordan Love, two touchdowns, no interceptions, only completed 54% of his throws, did have 269 yards. Pollard had a great game, not a good game from Rashad White, and we also gave up a pretty good game to the backup running back as well. Both the starter and backup each had a touchdown, though Zach Moss did score a rushing touchdown in this one. Nakua, good game. Ayuk, solid game, had a touchdown. Kincaid, solid. Dobbs, solid, had a touchdown. So... I don't really know how we didn't win that game. Seemed like we did pretty well. We just didn't do well enough. We did have four tackles for a loss, one by Lloyd Fotu, Diabati, and Weeks. And we had a sack by Diabati. And there were no interceptions kicking-wise. We were three for three in extra points. Did not attempt a field goal, and that field goal could have tied the game. Against the Cowboys. On paper, looked very competitive here. Pretty simple across the board, though... We just weren't really converting our touchdowns, it seems like. No touchdowns, one interception for Jordan Love, 64% completion, so better in terms of that. Around the similar yardage, 264. Rushing-wise, Tajay Spears, four yards a carry. Rashad White, only 2.8. Did at least get a touchdown, but so did their backup, and our backup did not. Receiving-wise, Dobbs, solid game. We gave up a good bit to Juwan Jennings. Nakua, solid. Gabe Davis had a touchdown on us. Just, yeah, not really a whole lot. It was a big game from Adrian Sharp, though. Four tackles for a loss led both teams. We also had two from Tonga, one for Barton, Johnson, Spiller, and Fotu, with some sacks sprinkled in there. One from Spiller and then split with Fotu and Blackman. And then one interception for us was Marcus Williams, though most of our scoring came on field goals. Matt Gay, three of three. So we just needed the touchdowns, and then we probably could have won that game. But that leaves us here one and two. Most of our division is one and two. Seahawks and 49ers are as well. Rams, they are three and zero oh right now. But the next two games are divisional games, Seahawks, then Rams. So I think we're going to jump into some quarter sim here, maybe jump a little bit into the fourth quarters, primarily focusing on that Rams game and hopefully we get a blowout win, although maybe I shouldn't say that because I keep jinxing us. So knock on wood, hopefully we see some good play against the Seahawks and can quickly get on over to the Rams. And it is a home game to kick us off as we do give up a field goal and that just about carried to the end of the first quarter before we did tack on our own. So it's tied 3-3 heading into the second. As the Seahawks drive, they score a touchdown. They're driving again, though we get the stop in. We level it up 10-10. Hold scores until the right before the end of halftime. 13-10 Seahawks in front. Let's get through the third quarter here. As it's going back and forth, some defensive play. So we're into the fourth quarter. So let's slow it down a little bit here. Fourth and two, we punt. Wish I knew it was a fourth and two. Probably would have went for it. Let's see if our defense gets the stop. It's a gain of three play one. Dana five leads third and two. And we give up eight with a first down. Seven more to Weaver. Then another third and short in which we get the stop. Jalen Johnson knocks it away, and we're out on offense. Starting back at the 30 following the five-yard return. Need a touchdown on this drive to take a lead, or at least a field goal to level things up. Unfortunately, we have a penalty first and 15, a throwaway. Leaves second and 15. We get six from Love, third and nine. First down going to Dalton Kincaid. Get inside the 25, we will jump in, or if we're inside the red zone. Anytime in there with a first set of downs, a fresh set of downs. Wow. As we do have a second and three convert. Thrown away. Third and three. Thrown away. Let's tie this game up here. And we will with Matt Gay. 13-13. Need the defense to get one more stop here. Lawrence picks up six. A sack from Malik Spiller. Third and 11, we give up 20 to Wandale Robinson. As they're close to midfield here, Gilles picks up four. Another four for Algier. Said that we're the first time in a six. Gives them a fresh set of downs in plus territory. So as we're inside the two-minute warning, they probably need about 10-ish yards for a field goal. Lawrence from the pocket. We'll go deep down the bottom, finding their target to the 23. Isaiah Likely in double coverage. Just good throw, good route, as they're definitely in field goal range now. 
And also letting clock run as they hand it off Algier down the middle. We'll pick up a good chunk, six yards there. The first time out called, we have two more remaining. Need to hold them to the field goal on this set of downs and get down the field with a touchdown or just go ahead and let them in or not. Would have heard they let them in. First and goal, though, could let them in here. 109 on the clock, they hand it off and do get in. Shoving down Spiller, we need a touchdown. Now with just over a minute and only one timeout remaining, can Love get us downfield and send us to OT? We need the touchdown. We start with a throw behind Ayuk. Does at least well to stop the clock, but not in helping us get to the end zone. As we now have three down to the bottom, Kincaid lone up top. Love from the clean pocket across the middle. Gonna go to Nakua, picking up that first down, letting clock roll. As we're around the 40 second mark and counting, still have that one timeout. Love is gonna pick up some yards sliding for the first down, maybe call the timeout there or not. We'll let it continue to run. Still the timeout in our back pocket. We're under 20 seconds left here. Love throws it late. It's popped up and out of bounds for Dobbs. And considering the use of clock here, I'm gonna jump in. We got some press coverage on the outside, two high safeties. Though they leave Ayuk alone, we loft it up for him and it's about a step too far out in front. That probably should have been the leveler, but it is not. We still have an opportunity, nine seconds, timeout in our pocket. They have Christian Gonzalez over on the right-hand side over Dobbs in press coverage. As we have to step up, going up here and knocked away intended for Terrell. Four seconds left, this gotta be it. And it'll be the Hail Mary set versus the prevent defense. Need the offense to hold up long enough to get everyone downfield. Let this one rip into the bunch. Just someone make the play. And yeah, we brought it in. Brandon Ayuk in the jumbled up mess gets the touchdown. Let's watch the replay here. Just chucking it up is love. So high the camera doesn't even see it as it's actually down to the bottom. Awful camera work, but in that bunch, it was a one hand grab from Ayuk. And Gay can go ahead and send us into OT with the PAT with a chance to still find the winner. Absolutely ridiculous, but we have a chance still, but it's the Seahawks out first as we start OT. Lawrence can end this game with a touchdown. Field goal gives us a chance, or if we could just get a stop, even better. As on second and three, they come out with a heavier set, two tight ends to the top. Hand this one off down the middle, Algier, who will squeeze out the first down, just rumbling down to the 44. 17 carries, 84 yards, and the touchdown that nearly won him the game. Seems like we've still struggled in stopping the run as we nearly just got blown up down the middle there. Linebackers step up to make the tackle, leaving him with second and seven as they send two receivers down to the bottom. They got a fullback and a tight end towards the top. Algier the running back, quick throw, slant, nearly intercepted by Johnson. Well, with third and seven, a chance to get off the field here. They got trips up top, likely down to the bottom. Play action for Lawrence. Rolling, throwing up top, and at the ankle of Jalen Johnson. Defense holds. Now our offense only needs a field goal. We start back at the 20. Gay can hit from around... I want to say the 42 is where we need to get to. As Rashad White with a booming run, sprinting past the 40, down at the 45. Only nine rushes for him in this game, 57 yards. Don't know why we didn't go to him more there, though. He clearly doubled his yard total really on that play. So maybe that's why. As we go back to him, trying to bounce and not finding any space. So we'll shake it up here. Second and 10, we got three down to the bottom, one up top. Love from the pocket, setting up the halfback screen. We got some blockers out in front and we pick up one block with a gain of four. So a whole lot of work there for a minimal gain as that's leaving us with third and six. We got a bunch down to the bottom. Play action, Love on the move. Perfect throw to Ayuk. We're definitely in field goal range now. Well, let's not do anything weird and mess it up. 
We're bringing out some fresh legs here in Moss. Follow some good blocks down the middle. Tried to run through the defender. Slowed him down, but picking up the first with a gain of 11. We're not trying to do anything fancy here. Just letting it run down the field. And whatever happens, happens. Kincaid going to move over to the left-hand side. They bring guys down to meet him. So, well, wanted to go with the stretch back to the other side. Didn't let me switch. Get a gain of two. So maybe we just go back to some of the interior runs here with Moss. Following behind the bigger offensive line and getting stood up there by Edmonds. Fine by me. Let clock run. If we walk it in for a touchdown, fine. If we just let this thing run to the fourth down and score the field goal to win, also fine by me is that's what it looks like it's gonna be. So Gay out to knock in the winner, but Seahawks trying to ice him. It's a 28 yarder for one of the NFL's best to win the game versus the division rival. It is up and right down the middle. We walk it off here at home with a big win, upsetting a division rival who has been to the Super Bowl a number of times this series. It was a key game for us to win, but that's just the first of two divisional matches. And we're jumping straight over to the Rams game, also a home game, though we give up the touchdown first, and it ends that first quarter with that 7-0 lead here for the Rams. We need a bigger second quarter here. We need to level this one up, and we do. We then give up a touchdown right after, and before half, we at least tack on a field goal. It's 14-10, heading into the third quarter. Need a big second half as we take a lead, 17-14, and it looked like I believe we were on our marching way down towards the end zone here. With a chance to make this a two-score game. We're already up three. Could be a 10-point game. Quick math. As we hand this one off down the middle, it's Rashad White bouncing around, diving and powering into the end zone through some arm tackles. Rashad White gives us that two-score lead. With us losing two of the opening three, winning our first two divisional games could be big. Though we need the defense to have a fantastic fourth quarter here as it's third and nine, we give up 10 to Michael Mayer. He was a pro bowler last year. Eckler picks up six more. And then 14 going to Chenault Jr. Also was a pro bowler. So as mentioned at the top of the seasonal start, our division is really, really tough, and we have to get these wins when we can, as Eckler will pick up another five. I'm okay with them running clock if they want to do that, though. As they go empty here, second and five, I doubt that's what they're doing. Hard count, no one jumps. It's Herbert setting up a tight end screen that's going to be for a loss as Marcus Williams comes crashing down. So in a way, I was wrong. It did kind of end up just being a clock runner for him. As it's third and eight, it's a tight single back set. Play, not even play action. They hand it off Eckler, who does get him close for fourth and three. Do they go for the field goal here? They do at least send out the unit. Kicking from just shy of the 22, we'll call it a 32 yarder. And it is up and good. They now are just a touchdown behind. Now we could really use with running some clock or picking up 11 yards to Puka Nakua on play one and then losing 10 yards Braxton Jones makes it first and 20. We then gain four yards through a rush, thrown away, third and 16, thrown away. That holding call is killer as now the defense going to rely on you. Rams start back at the 24. We had a chance to close out the game last week. We gave it up with a touchdown. Luckily, we ended up coming back with the score, the Hail Mary, to send it into OT. But it's a big play here. Debo Samuel up to about midfield. Would prefer not to give up late scores in this one. Knock on wood, fingers crossed, whatever you do for good luck. As it's first and 10, Herbert from the pocket checks down to the bottom. Debo, gain of nine. Hard to say a check down is a gain of nine, but it kind of was there. Second and one with a tight shotgun look. We bring one extra guy, but it leaves space open for Chenault Jr. Across the middle, inside the 30. Herbert, 24 of 33 on the day. So that a pretty good one. 
First and 10, though, would love to force a mistake. Some pass rush as well would be great. But it's a lot of quick throws as Chenault close to another first down as we hit the two-minute warning. They just need a touchdown. They got three timeouts. Second and one. Cut back Eckler towards the top. Another juke back towards the middle. That's where the defenders were. Will be a first down either way for him down at the 12. And still all their timeouts. So they could be methodical here as Herbert from center just chilling. Throws late, diving, and it's off the hands of the receiver. That was, I want to say Kadarius Tony, who's been so good. I, I think we also had an injury on the play two weeks, one of our defensive linemen. Pass rush down the middle, forces the roll out to their tight end, who does catch it. Gain of four. As we're just about at the minute mark here, third and six. Three up top, one down below. Herbert, throw across the middle is off for Chenault Jr. Should have been another touchdown. Now they let two opportunities go by the wayside. It's now fourth and game. They could get a first down just in between the second and the one yard line. With a throw up top, it's the touchdown instead. They do not miss that second opportunity for Kadarius Tony to tie this one up. And after a poor return, we start back at the 18, and I'm coming out here essentially to try to help control clock. We have all three timeouts. We need to use them wisely. As we step up here, wisely's probably not scrambling. Play one, we'll have to call one of the timeouts there. As for Gay, we need to get around that 42-yarder. From there, you feel a bit more safe. Though that's still a good distance away. We have two timeouts remaining. If we could use some sideline, that would be great. Or take the wide open receiver. It's Romeo Dobbs right down the middle. Let's try to get back to the line quickly. We're going to take some runoff. But we still have about 20 seconds in counting here. Two timeouts. Just need some quick plays. About 10 more yards. Just got to be safe. To the outside, it's not a clean throw from Nakua. Wanted that a little bit flatter. Now we don't need the down the field shots here. Field goal will do. And it's that basically at the same line to gain as the first down. As we loft that one up, it's tipped away. Almost had Nakua there. Now third and ten. Nine seconds left. We still have two timeouts. Probably could have used one of them, one of them earlier then as we did not have to save it. And Sack comes in, not what we needed. He clutched at the throw instead of letting it fly. And now we're definitely out of field goal range. And I feel like we're a bit further away than we were last week for the Hail Mary. This one would be for the win. Can Jordan Love get it there? Offensive line hold up long enough to get everyone downfield. Let this one rip. Ball's going to the end zone, but it gets picked off at the goal line. It's going to be returned by Stingley. We just can't give up a touchdown, and he breaks a couple tackles, but it will be back-to-back -back overtime games. But this time, we start with ball first. Just need a touchdown. <laughs> a lot more simpler to say than do. Field goal still gives him a chance. As we start with Kincaid, it's a gain of two. Love has not been too good in this one. Did have an interception. Most of the scoring has come through the running game. As we go that way here, Rashad White breaking down to the bottom with the first down and getting stopped by number three at the 38. And that rush does put him over the century marker as we then go empty with three up top, two down to the bottom. It's Love from shotgun. Across the middle and dropped by Dobbs. He heard the footsteps. We'll say he hasn't been all too impressive, though he has a pretty decent overall. He just doesn't quite make the plays. As we hand this one off, White, who's get pushed back, will be a gain of five. Not quite sure what that other red line is. I guess that was maybe the Rams field. Or no, that's probably ours, then we flipped the field. We're going to find Kincaid either way here, so forget about that red line. Forget about the other first down line, because we got it. Just need simple plays here. Take what the Rams give us, and hopefully they give us the game. As we're under three and a half minutes here, it's White trying to find some space to run, but really not much. He does have two touchdowns on the day, as we have two receivers down to the bottom, one up top. Sitting back in shotgun once again. Love 
from the pocket going up top to white who could have got smacked could have been intercepted instead it's a drop third and nine a lot on the line here one up top three down to the bottom it is rashad white still the back he goes out on a route love going up top dobbs does not drop this one first down at the 35 Definitely in field goal range, but the walk-off is the touchdown. With a bunch down to the bottom. Love rolling towards the top, staying behind his line, and throws it away. Sitting around a 52-54% completion percentage. We could use his biggest plays here. As he dumps this one off, it's Dobbs with another first down, but a flag comes in late. And somehow it's a holding call that pretty much just negates the play. Second and ten. This will be another throw from Love. It opens up across the middle, and that's where we go. It's Nakua, who gets stood up after a gain of eight, bringing up third and two. Do we go back to White here? He's the lone back. It's a stacked front here for the Rams, making a check at the line. It will be a throw. Love finding his target as Nakua holds on. We've drained a whole lot of time here in OT as we're inside the two-minute mark. Rams, if we don't somehow score, would have not much time. As it will be a throw here from Love going up top. Kincaid with the catch. Gain of eight. Really taking this offense back to the basics here. Flat routes, some out routes. Hands off down the... Hands off? That's on hand offs down the middle. As we go to that handoff, White with a first down. He missed the opportunity to have his hat trick in the opening game of this season. Could he get the walk off with the hat trick here to play action? Love from the pocket, rolling towards the top and throwing back down to the bottom and way out of bounds. Definitely could have taken the simpler option and just thrown it to the top out of bounds, but either way, it's fine. Second and 10, slant, drop. The big hit comes in as I believe that was Dobbs who dropped it. Have not seen Ayuk at all in OT here. It's third and 10. Will be a throw from Love. In the pocket. Going to the back corner. Tossed up and nearly picked off by Sneed. But it will inevitably be just the field goal. Gay out to put us in front. Make it 27-24. Would still leave the Rams with a chance. And that's exactly what the Rams needed. With a minute 13, it's our defense that will need to shut the door in the face of Herbert and the Rams offense. They will need to get probably around that 40 or so marker as they start off with a check down Debo. Just get some one. They do have two timeouts. We'll have to use them wisely, unlike what I did earlier. With three up top, one down to the bottom, Herbert. We'll throw up top and it gets picked off. That's game. Johnson though looking to tack on some points because it is a rivalry. And that is how we win back-to-back -back rivalry games at home. Key games that should help us jump up this division. And we would carry that momentum, rattling off eight more wins in a row leaving us here in week 15 with four games left. At this point, we have been on a 10 game win streak. Knock on wood, cross your fingers because we can lock in this division with one more win in week 15. We are four games up on the Rams. We beat them in that first matchup very closely. We play them in week 18. If we were to lose the remainder of these games, including that win against the Rams, we could drop out of first in the NFC West. But right now, we've been on a dominant streak. 10 wins in a row. The first seed over on the NFC. Currently, the Rams are the only one from our division who are currently slated to make the playoffs, which is completely different than how every other season has gone so far, where the 49ers, Seahawks, and Cardinals have made it each and every time. The 49ers have dropped off their 3-10, and 10, Seahawks 6-7. and seven. One win, and we have solidified our spot in the playoffs.
but the streak would come crumbling down in the fourth quarter. It was tied 14-14, and then we gave up 28 points to the Philadelphia Eagles. Not a clean game. Lamar Jackson, four touchdowns, 76% completion. And two and two for Jordan Love, 64%. I mean, nothing flashy there at all. But the defense, assumingly, was there any fumbles perhaps? No. So maybe some, some late game interceptions gave them a little bit of something to carry forth and obviously dominate that game. But what happened with the Rams? They also lost their matchup. So despite us losing in a horrific fashion, we have locked in our playoff spot. As for the NFC in total, the Rams are the next best team four games back. So even if we lose out the remainder of this season, which hopefully we don't, we have clinched the first round by which is a dramatic difference compared to every other season where we've not been close or barely missed out on the playoffs. We have solidified our spot the last few weeks, two of the three of which are against division rivals. But I think we've watched a good bit here today. So let's jump to the end of the season, see how we wrapped up, take a look at the stats, and prepare ourselves for playoff football. And we would answer back the big loss with a big win of our own, essentially flipping the script here. 42-14 over the 49ers. We scored 21 in the second quarter. And it was a pretty good game here for Jordan Love. 61% completion, three touchdowns, 210 yards. And we picked off Baker Mayfield four times. So that, pretty fantastic. In the last two games, we would split, and that included a loss here against the Chargers, team that has won the Super Bowl every single season now in this universe after the crash last episode, but it was a close game. 31-30. All came down to a field goal, maybe? Perhaps? Who quite knows? But we did give up over 450 yards. Meanwhile, we were under 350 ourselves. Jordan Love, three touchdowns, 74% completion. Mahomes, just one touchdown but he completed 81% of his throws. So as a potential Super Bowl preview, we know that we need the DB groups to step up whenever we potentially meet them. But in the final week, we would get the final say here against the Rams, sweeping them as I believe we swept every single divisional opponent this season, winning 30 to 17, near 400 yards for us. We gave up a little bit over 300 for them. One touchdown for Love, 73% completion. Herbert, I mean, pretty solid outside the one interception. But that is a dominant season for us. We went on again a 10-game winning streak. Dropped one, won one, dropped one, won one. But overall, I mean, fantastic. Team really came together. A lot of the games were close, but we pulled them off at the end. And in terms of the playoffs, we are obviously getting that first round by. The Chicago Bears are going to be the two seed, taking on the seventh seed Packers, three seed Cowboys versus six seed Bucks, fourth seed Panthers taking on fifth seed Rams. So we definitely messed up their seeding with that final win in week 18. Over on the AFC, it is the Buffalo Bills with a first round bye. The Chargers did not get it. Despite a close game and then winning the Super Bowl in three years in a row, they do not get the first round bye. So they have to fight further to make it to the Super Bowl. They take on the seventh seed Baltimore Ravens, three seed Colts take on six seed Chiefs, and four seed Steelers take on the fifth seed Browns. That will all begin next Wednesday. If you guys are new to this series, when we do reach the playoffs, the series changes a little bit. It's one game per episode. We watch the full game, but we have the 50 like goal. If you guys get that video 50 likes and we win, the next round is posted the next day. So, so we could essentially finish off this series next week if we win throughout and you guys keep hitting those 50 like goals. So make sure you guys are hitting that bear icon or scrolling down below, hitting the subscription button and definitely tick the bell icon so you're notified of when these videos go live. So you can hit that like button quickly and fingers crossed, knock on wood again, whatever you do for good luck that we win. And then we can continue on from there. If not, it's every single Wednesday and Saturday as normal, just the one game per episode. So there's no spoilers. But before 
we leave. Let's take a look at the stats. We were the seventh offense jumping up forever. I want to say an average of 22 per the last few years. Though the defense, not great. 28th. So it's really the offense that carried us this year. Jordan Love, 29 touchdowns to six interceptions. Really bounced back after the first three weeks. He had, I want to say it was five touchdowns to four interceptions. So he dramatically improved. 43, almost 4,400 yards for him. Rashad White goes over 1,000 rushing yards on 3.9 yards per carry. Did have 12 touchdowns, fumbled once. Jordan Love had two more touchdowns and a fumble. Zach Moss dramatically saw his carries decrease this year. Only 2.7 yards per attempt, but he did have eight touchdowns. Kincaid had a fumble for some reason. He was running with the ball, and Cole Turner did have a touchdown, I'm assuming, at fullback. As for receiving, we had two thousand yard receivers both Brandon Ayuk and Puka Nakua close to 1200 yards both had eight touchdowns they are very similar though Ayuk did get the more amount of yards on slightly less catches Romeo Dobbs 768 three touchdowns he definitely is that number three and as I mentioned earlier he kind of has been a little bit disappointing but he's fine Kincaid, only five touchdowns, 635. Nothing splashy for him. Rashad White, three more touchdowns and another 331 yards. Niles Terrell, one of the younger receivers, did get a touchdown this year. Nikhil Harry did get another one at tight end. As for the offensive line, how did the sacks go? It was Bowles, who gave up 10, 7 for Richter, 6 for Freeland, 4 for Christensen, and Braxton Jones, the guy we specifically traded for, only 3. Defensively, though, Devin Lloyd, 115 tackles. Next up was that corner, Taron Johnson, Julian Blackman. I mean, overall, pretty solid across the board here. Alonzo Johnson did end up splitting some snaps with Barton for the last stretch, really, of the whole season. As soon as we went on that big run, he was out there as a sub backer. And he racked up 72 tackles. Tackle for a loss leader, though, is the second-year edge guy in Adrian Sharp. He had 15 13 for Malik Spiller. He's up to a star dev. Tonga had 10, 9 for weeks, and he had a pretty solid season once again. Faux 2, 7, 5 for that rookie linebacker. 4 for Lloyd, 3 for Johnson and Dennard, 2 for Barton and Diabati, and then 1 for Williams and Galay. Galay? Maybe. As for sacks, none that, you know, we didn't really have that key guy there. Spiller had 6. Lloyd had five blitzing from middle linebacker. Adrian Sharp just four this year. Weeks had three as well as Diabati. One for Tonga, Fotu, and Barton, and then half for Dennard and Blackman. So we're not racking up a whole lot of sacks, but it's a whole lot of different guys who are getting sacks. As for interceptions, though, it's Julian Blackman, our Pro Bowl safety, once again leading us here with five. Jeremy Dennard and Jalen Johnson both had four, and then one for Lloyd, Johnson, Johnson, Williams, and Burgess. And as for kicking, we did miss a couple of extra points, 49 of 51, and just one field goal, 22 of 23, so still Matt Gay, pretty solid season. Punting-wise, near 50 yards per punt. Did we have any kick returns or punt returns? No. But overall, that was a fantastic season, something I honestly was not quite expecting. But let's jump to the divisional round and see who we faced next. And it will be the Buccaneers. 87 across the board. We have an 87 offense, 84 defense. How did they do in the wild card? Dominant win over the three seed Cowboys, 38-3. On top of that, the Bears move on 31-21 versus their division rival in the Packers. And the Rams also move on 38-35. Over on the AFC side, the Chargers do move on. Closer game, though, 38-31 over the Ravens. Colts move on 28-21 over the Chiefs. And the Steelers move on 35-25 over the Browns. So as, again, mentioned earlier... The first playoff game, this series will be out next Wednesday. So again, make sure you're hitting that bear icon, scroll down, hit the subscription button, whatever one you prefer, and definitely tap that bell icon so you're notified of when those videos go live. Playoffs, one game per episode with a win and the 50 like goal. If you guys hit that, you can have the next round the very next day, which would just give you double 
videos as we'll have the traditional franchise as well posted on that Thursday. So a whole lot of content coming. You guys could even have a little bit more next week as long as you are hitting the correct buttons. And definitely do, if you enjoy the series, stick around. We're closing in on a thousand subscribers, so I appreciate all the subs that have been here, are joining, and those that are to come. So until next time, where we start playoff football with the Southwest States Only Challenge. We'll see you guys then. Bye. Oh,